There literally is. Rise of the Machines? Attack of that's the Clones. Not, that's, not that's not a good film. I don't know. You've seen a lot of weird B, bro. Rise of the Machines. Oh, I've lost hope with the Terminator. There's too many. Terminator 3 was on. Only when you were born, probably. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> we haven't done an intro yet. Hello. Hello there. That's my intro. That's your I hello like my there. Intro because my intro is my channel is almost entirely Star Trek, and every single video I think only one person has ever commented on it. Every single video comes in with a Star Wars reference. Yeah, General Kenobi. Yeah. <laughs> hey, and your General Grievous reference, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. No, you, you no, only probably one come... person has ever. I think they commented like something, something like um, they basically got my reference and just responded with. General Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes. You should probably come more into frame. You're like nearly cut off. Yeah, I'm trying to get that close to you. Do I stink that much? I just don't like being close to frame. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's autism, yeah. It's not my fault. I don't like being near people. Well, yeah. Uh, I haven't introduced myself. Uh, Hi. Yeah, there's another autism thing. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because the amount of people who've been around, they're just kind of out looking at me like, Who's this? And you're just talking at them. I'm just like, like hi. <laughs> that is that right now. Hi, I'm in person. I exist. I'm Steph. Subscribe to my channel. I'm Probably here for the exposure. The it will be linked in the description box below, though. And also the eye thingy. Unless, on, unless this is on the podcast, in which case it's not. Well, in that good. case, y you can find me as Steph Red. I'm Steph Red on most things. Yeah. Okay, so this this video is going to be us just talking about horror films. It's about as scripted as that intro was. So yeah, yeah. and it's a good thing because I'm like old, nearly old, nearly old enough to be your dad. So ah, uh, seventeen years you're old enough to be my dad. I'd be a very fucking young dad. Yeah. We're both from areas with young parent rates, though. That's no excuse. That's just an excuse. That <laughs> Where I come from, 17 is like a normal age just, just to be a parent. Just because some of the girls when I was in high school were, were mothers already doesn't mean that that's normal or in any way good. Oh no, but it you know happens what, you know a lot. One of my exes is now a grandmother. And she's the same age as me. As in, like, she, we went to primary school and high school together. I mean, I'm technically old enough to be a parent, so. She was she was a mum at like sixteen, and then her daughter is now was now a mum at fifteen, so she now has a granddaughter. What? How old was she when you were dating her? Twenty something. Milf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's. I mean, technically, you're technically old enough to be my parent. I'm technically old enough to have a child, so that that checks out. Get off my lawn. <laughs> You're just a grumpy old man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, so the point was the age gap means I'm more into older horror films. I do like some modern horror films, but I'm not as into as... Like, I've never seen any of the Conjuring films. None of them? No, no. I, I wanted them for last Christmas as, like, a box set so I could binge watch them because they're not free on any of the... the and they're like. not, no. So I, want, I was just going to get them as a box set. Yeah. Because I've not seen The Conjuring, I've not seen The Nun, I've not seen Annabelle, none of it. And I really want to watch them because everyone tells me they're good and they look good, but I've not actually pulled my finger out my ass and actually watched the them. The thing is, they're very hit or miss. I'd say the first two Conjuring were really good. The first Annabelle was boring as shit. Nothing happened. It was just an ominous doll that kept moving about. And then there were some killers that were like Charles Manson-esque cult shit. On a good tangent, though, I right. watched a TikTok video, right? Right. With this guy and his, his son's like saying, like his mum's in the room as well and he's saying to his dad, what did you do? No, it was the mum saying to us. Was it the mum saying to us? I don't care. It was one of the two weird ends. And he's going, S tell him what you did. And the dad's just like laughing his tits off. He's like, what the like, tell him what you did when he, when I was younger. And he's like, and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He got this this creepy doll we found in the house and we moved into it. And we gave him it as a as a as a toy. Right. And they they hated it, so they threw it out. The dad found it in the bin. And was like, took it back in, put it at the end of his bed. Left. <laughs> so got rid of it again because he freaked out and ended up in the bedroom. And then. They burnt it that time to make sure it go. So the dad and then buried it. So the dad went out, dug it up, put oh fixed my it, God. and then started hiding it around his room. <laughs> That's basically what happened in Annabelle. They kept throwing it out, and it just kept reappearing. Yeah. And then, and then the mum was like, "Yeah, yeah." And they ended up in the bed for six fucking months. And I was like, "That dude is my hero. That is my, that is my daughter's future." I'm surprised she didn't. 
I'm I getting try, divorced. I keep, I keep getting shouted at, but I keep trying to hide things in Rain's room. <laughs> to freak her out. I like like set, what? I, I set Halloween decorations up at the doorway and stuff. Just, oh I, my like god. Ones, I have like loads of animatronic Halloween decorations. I set them up at the doorway and my was like, get them. Like, you're fucking scared to death. It's like, yeah, but it'd be funny. Then she wants to sleep Character in building. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's good, to build, good to build a strength up. I forgot what I was talking about. Build a strength up. Yeah, yeah, We're talking about The Conjuring. Oh uh, yeah, I've not seen them. Yeah. I've nothing to contribute. I've not seen any of them. I mean, the... Uh, some of them are good, some of them are a little boring. Like, you know horror films where nothing happens? And it'll just be like odd, random, cheap jump scares? Yeah. You either like, get that... Blood and Honey. That film, Jesus That's fucking Christ. That's a modern Christ. horror film I've seen. You know they're making a sequel. Why? The, the dude's making all kinds of them. He's doing a Bambi horror movie now. He's doing a Mickey Bam Mouse one. Bambi's horror, horrifying enough. He's doing Steamboat Willie, isn't he? Isn't yeah, that? because it's now public property. <laughs> After <laughs> Disney fought tooth and nail to cling onto the copyright, and they're like, nah, 100 years, public property now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. now they're making a Mickey Mouse horror film. I, I feel like as soon as a beloved childhood thing becomes okay. public property, it's just going to have I a horror film a adaption. Really disturbing video on... Um, on like, like on X, yeah. Oh, Twitter. I'm not I hate X. It. It's Twitter. But, but it's it's basically a cesspool, but it's also a cesspool with a lot. of It's boobies. an Elon it's, Musk run cesspool. It's a cesspool with a lot of boobies. So I'm not going to describe exactly what this video was I came across. But oh, of course. Woman. Is it weird porn? You've sent me weird porn I, before. I haven't. I haven't sent you this one. It's. I, it's, I don't it's, want to. <laughs> it's basically a, in, in very short description a woman with a Mickey Mouse doll and another appendage doing something. I'll be honest, it wasn't interesting on a level of that's attractive. It was more like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> How did you X. come across that? <laughs> How does one come across... Wait, were you actively searching for it? No, but I, I do consider things like that a challenge to rise to. <laughs> Anything's a dildo if you're brave enough. Yeah. Including Mickey Mouse dolls. And those Xenomorph 3D prints apparently I made. According to a girl I gave them to once. You know, know a lot of questionable people. I told you I attract weirdos. Yeah, you I've do. I've even mentioned this on the channel before. It's a random, like, aside in one of my... Because I go on tangents every now and again. And I run, I seem like to now. I attract weirdos. I can't help it. They seem to like me. Like 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 moths in a flame. Only I'm not the flame. They're, in, they're insane and on fire. I actually get No, you've told me about your exes. Mm -hmm. And then you mention things which makes me think maybe you're the crazy one. That would make a certain degree of sense when you think, you know, everyone knows the crazy yeah. person in their friend group, and if you don't know one, it's you. Yeah, you That's are the crazy one. one. Yeah, yeah. I've known you long enough. Yeah, yeah. You've met my partner, though, right? I attract crazy. Yeah. She she's a witch, for God's sake. Yeah, but she's, like, quiet crazy. She's ginger. Yeah, it's mm. that. Gingers yeah. don't have souls. No, they eat other people. They collect them. She has jars. <laughs> I'm going to come across something really weird in the house one day. It'll just be a jar. I'll just be like, what the fuck is this? It's the souls of the gingers that she's collected. <laughs> no, she doesn't collect other ginger souls. Oh, that, just that, souls. That would be racist. No. <laughs> is ginger they're a race? Dang, they're a endangered species, apparently, according to her. I don't think they're endangered. Everyone knows a ginger that they make fun out of. I mean, you keep calling me ginger and I'm clearly not. I also call you a bimbo a lot. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that that one's true, though. <laughs> right. This was meant to be about horror films. It was. It? We've just talked about gingers so far. Yeah. And weird, questionable shit you found on X. 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 <laughs> Damn, that guy's a good one. Oh, honestly. I feel like he's gonna sell Twitter quite soon. It's not worth anything. It's, it's worth not. Like billion now. It's so not. 45, he bought it for, he's half the value of it. Yeah, and they only have 5% of the employees that they had, because Elon he came in and he sacked nearly everyone. Mm. It's a shame, because it, it, it was a good platform once. Was it? I don't want to compliment Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, on to horror films, because <laughs> we spent way too long on a tangent there. Yeah. The space we're filming in is very tiny. Hence the green screen. Yeah. yeah. It's small. Yeah. What's your favourite horror film? I don't have one. Great it's, note it's to start on. <laughs> Alright, All right. what is a horror film you find yourself re-watching a lot? Scream. Scream is I a good like one. Scream. 
I like, yeah. I like the entire Scream franchise. It's one of the rare horror franchises where there isn't a bad entry. There are bad films in the Scream franchise compared to other Scream movies. Yeah. But any of the Scream films, in my opinion, stood alone is still better than most other horror movies. For example, I really like the Jason films, all the Friday the 13th. Going but, way too long. But there are real duds in that. There are some gems, like uh, number five is actually a lot better than people give it credit for, even though, yeah. spoilers, the killer isn't even Jason or his mother. But, yeah, you've not seen them all, have you? I've They're, seen them all. I've seen, like, the first basically three. Basically, the, the films are, are famous for Jason Voorhees being Yeah, but he doesn't but, come in until the second yeah, one. Pamela Voorhees is the killer in the first film. Jason's yeah. the second, third, and fourth. Then it's another dude whose name I can't remember off the top of my head in the fifth film pretending to be Jason. Then it goes right. back to being Jason. So there are duds in that franchise. Another good franchise would be Child's Play, though, which I, I really like. I've not <laughs> it's seen so the, camp. It's, it's so it's camp. I love other, it. it it's, it's the only one aside from Scream until recently, which has been solely produced and written and stuff by its original creator. Didn't he die? No. Yeah. Uh, Wes Craven, yeah. Yeah. Which is very sad. He was really good. He, like, everything he touched, all the um, Freddy films, everything, they were all, the man was just a creative genius. To be fair, I only really, like, I'm not much of a franchise person. I usually watch the first one. I'm just like, great, I don't want to continue. I've not, I've only seen the first Scream. I've done that with Saw. So, right, so the first three, very good. I think I got through two, and then I gave okay. up. The but first the two sort of thing is like, great. They, they took a, a basic concept, and then, because they ran with it too much, I was like, by the time I turned back, yeah. I turned away, looked back again, there's suddenly like ten films, I'm like... It just turned into those, you like... you claustrophobic gore fest into a franchise? I don't understand. Some of them, like, it just turned into like, oh, it's a copycat killer, like, we had Spiral... Which was one that came out a few years ago, which everyone disregards, and also Jigsaw, which was 2018, which everyone also disregards because it was just like spin offs, really. Mm. But it's got to the point, like, even Sorax, it's like, what do you do now? Yeah. But then again, Sorax was a lot that better than. than Jason X, right? <sighs> that said, Jason X, speaking as a sci fi fan, has like half the cast of Andromeda in it. It does? Yeah, the oh, TV wow. series Andromeda Ascendant, which unfortunately also stars Kevin Sorbo, but I make, I make uh, no illusions that I don't... I, he's not great. He's not a great actor. He's a bit of a goon. But um, it's got Lisa Ryder and Lexa Doig. All right. It. Lexa Doig, who I've had a crush on since being a kid. <sighs> of course. In the, in the Andromeda series, played an android, but in this, plays a human. Le Lisa Ryder, in the Andromeda series, plays a human. In Jason X, plays the android. Ran just random trivia. Oh, nice. no, aside from that thing I like about Jason X, the whole film is kind of garbage. <laughs> it's it does the thing where, where they all do like the horror version of Jumping the Shark, mm. where they suddenly end up in space, like Leprechaun Four in space, and you've got Jason X in space, Hellraiser Bloodlines, basically Hellraiser in space, and although Hellraiser Bloodlines is nicely bad, it's actually quite a good film. It's the last good Hellraiser up until the reboot recently, which was actually decent. Fair enough. Again, one of the few modern horrors I've actually watched. It's mostly because I like the Hellraiser franchise, but it's another one. After you might as well not watch the films after Bloodline. I think there's a nine, possibly ten Hellraiser films, not including the reboot. Why? I, I remember vaguely seeing the first Hell Hellraiser when I was like fourteen. That's the only one I've watched. That also has um, and I've forgotten his name, Garrick <laughs> from Star Trek in it. The character right. Garrick's an awesome character from Star Trek Deep Space Nine. And he's an anti-hero kind of character, to put it, to make it easier. And he's in that he also played the villain in um, Dirty Harry, the first Dirty Harry. Right. And he's he's such a lovely guy, I've seen him at conventions and stuff. But he's he's in that as like he plays the dad in the first Hellraiser film. Right. He plays the dad character. Oh yeah, I know who you're on about. Yeah. He's and then like Hellbound Hellraiser 2, which is it's based on, it's, they're all based on the Hellbound, the Hellbound Heart, obviously, mm. but that one's, that's a really good film. Yeah. It bring it makes the villain much more grounded as well, because technically, people think the Cenobites are the villains in the Hellraiser movies, they're not. They become the villains, because the later films just become slashers and their shit, mm. but the early films, the Cenobites are not the bad guys. The first film, it's her uncle who's the bad guy, a human villain, and uh, her stepmother, them are the two villains, because, you know, if Disney have taught us anything... It's always the stepmom, step yeah. Paul Hub taught us different, but yeah. hey. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've completely forgotten 
completely lost track of that now. But yeah, the, the, the second film is really good. The third one is pretty good. The fourth one is okay, which mm. is Bloodlines, which is in space. Usually when they do the whole in space, though, it's last resort. It's like, what do we do now? Let's stick them in space. And like when Leprechaun did it, it's not exactly the most... Um, that's kind of what they ended up doing with the Alien films. They started off in space, though. Oh, no, they started off in space, yeah, but then it just turned into, oh, my God, we're trapped in space and there's aliens, but more boring. Alien and Aliens, great. I actually really like Alien 3, which I think is a controversial stance on that. That one. is controversial. I like the director's cut more than the original. The director's cut's closer to his original vision. Right. Where instead of coming out of a, an ox, I think it comes out of in the theatrical cut, it comes out of a dog in the... Um, director's cut right because the, the alien in aliens and um, alien is bipedal isn't it because it comes out of a human host yeah in alien 3 it's quadrupedal because it comes out of a four-legged animal because they basically right. take an attribute to the host don't they that they come from so they adapt to the environment more easily or some some mm. whatever reason and that's why the why she like ripley mentions it doesn't move quite like the others did it moves more like a dog because yeah. it came out of a dog oh in the in the, in the director's cut the director's right. cut's a lot better it, ex- it makes more it actually sense. explains yeah, it shit explains rather than just the- most random batshit crazy things yeah, happening. Yeah, right, like why the crazy person releases it from the vault is explained in the th- director's cut better. There's much more character exploration. Mm. We got more with um, the ca- basically more of the characters, and the film makes more sense. Yeah, and its environment's more. It's still not fantastic. Of course, it's not as good as Aliens or Alien, but it's still. I quite like it. I never, I've never disliked. I always dislike Re- Resurrection, even though I like the cast in Resurrection. Vaguely seen Resurrection. That's Ron Perlman in it. Ron Perlman is awesome. Yeah. Fun fact about Alien: that was a feminist film because Ridley Scott he wanted to basically like second wave feminism was a big thing in the seventies when it was first released, and basically he wanted to create a film. That was a metaphor for childbirth and mm. So basically, they had all these people forcibly impregnated by these aliens and then them burst out of them. He also deliberately made it a male character. Exactly, initially. which is why the lone survivor which, is a woman. Yeah. Which is also, it's like, it's obviously an open secret. It was a famous fact about the film that when, yeah. when John Hurt had the, the chest burster erupt out of his chest, which I should have got one of those... Um, 3D printed chestbuster <laughs> dildos out that I've got apparently. Yeah. <laughs> to redo this bit. But when that burst out, he didn't tell anyone else there, so all the scared reactions were genuine. Including <laughs> the freak outs and screams that some of the cast did. They didn't know that was going to happen. That's only, pretty Only great. him and obviously the props guys knew that something was going to burst yeah. out of his chest, which was really cool. I also really liked that it's like a lot of people say like old movies don't, they're not as progressive. And it's like they say that modern Hollywood's much more progressive. But Alien... Is Alien's perfect, so progressive. Alien's a perfect example of how you should cast a film. Because now, I'm sorry, but I have... I I know people who will say, it's like, you'll have others, oh, not enough representation of films, and say, say, mm. black people in films. There's yeah. not enough black people in movies. Which is fine, because in the past, obviously, there has been a lot of systemic problems in that industry with sexism, with racism, and all the rest of it. Mm. And it is good to see more of that. But at the same time, like, my partner said, actually, about women... She said she finds it more offensive to just they put a woman into that role because they'll they'll replace say the doctor with a woman. She finds that more offensive than them just writing a good character for a woman. That it's is like, true. It's like oh we can't write a good female character so we just make... Ghostbusters. Yeah. Ghostbusters. 2016 remake. Yeah. 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 Instead of making characters which are good that are meant for women, they take a character that was meant for a man, make it a woman, or they also make women more masculine to give that better representation but that's not playing to their strengths ripley was a cool character but ripley was never meant to be male or female when he cast that film he put an open call it really out. could be yeah, anyone there was, there was it was not called ellen ripley it's fucking okay that may have been cut off somewhere so yeah again uh so casting yeah, for when cast, women when he, when he cast the alien movies he yeah. cast them as like dallas ripley whatever the character's name was their last but he name did, but he didn't put a first name in and he cast black white man, woman, didn't matter. Whoever which is very progressive for the which, 70s. Yeah, which considering that yeah. was, what, 78, 79, and people say that all the films weren't. The Dirty Harry movies, we're going off on a, a, another tangent of not being um, horror here, but the Dirty Harry movies, I rewatched them a couple of years ago and watched them through a more adult lens. I realised that each one of them has a theme behind it, mm. which is either tackling sexism, it's tackling um, racism, it's tackling some issue that 
Clint Eastwood or others because he was heavily involved in making their movies because he's a very left-wing person in Hollywood generally despite the fact that he always plays like the stereotypical sort of hard man mm. role. The Dirty Harry movies hide the fact that there, there's a lot of subliminal messaging going on in their films. Yeah. Behind the fact that you've just got a gun-wielding sort of kick-ass detective going around shooting bad guys. But mm. he's actually hiding a message of equality and liberalism and, you know, fighting sexism, fighting racism. Yeah. Behind all of his films. All five That's of the Dirty Harry movies actually have this messaging in them. One's heavily about a woman getting... Um, great because I don't want to get demonetized. Yeah. But, um, and that's the film is all about that. It's about her taking revenge for it. It's also about Jim Carrey in that one, I think. Or is that a different one? I forget. That's, like, I tangent. mean. But the point is, those films, uh, they're sending you a message without mm. you realizing you're absorbing a message, which I really like about those films. Yeah, Sasha Baron, Co- Sasha Baron Cohen, Bart Guy, he does the same thing with a lot of his films. Like, everyone will be like, oh, this is so offensive what he's saying about, like, Asian people and people from this part of the world and gay people, whatever. But the whole point is, he kind of ropes you in with these things to kind of prove people's prejudice towards these group of people. Like, he did a bit in a bar in, like, the deep south of America. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, he went in and he started saying in front of all these people, like, really anti-Semitic shit. And everyone is like, oh yeah, these Jewish people, and like getting them to say, like, agree with really anti Semitic stuff, like, oh, these Jewish people are stealing our jobs. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And at the end, when they were like, fully like, oh, fuck Jewish people ever, just really anti Semitic shit, he was like, yeah, I'm Jewish. <laughs> Let. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a joke. I can't remember who the comedian was. He does that shit all the time. It was another Jewish comedian, and he, uh, made, he made a joke, and he's like, you know what, this is ridiculous. Like, you got all these people always saying, like, the Jewish people were trying to take over the world. We're taking all your jobs. We're controlling the media to like control the flow of information. Mm. We've got uh, we're bribing members of government to make our own lives better. We're doing this. We're doing that. And it's like, and all I can say, you know, I, as a Jewish person, I find it absolutely disgusting how poorly we've actually got control of the media. <laughs> Changing the subject, spooky films. The ones that aren't horror films, but like they're spooky. Adjacent. Yes. Coraline, any Tim Burton film, The Addams Family, Batman. Beetlejuice, uh, Batman. Kind of spooky. Not really, but a Tim Burton film I really like. It's, it's one that I didn't it's know very much was his Tim style. Burton. Pretty much everything that Tim Burton makes is practically horror. It's got a, creepiness to, a creepiness to it. Like, got, got mentioning Christianity, Batman Returns, for example, has a lot of Christian undertones in it. The, the whole symbolism, it's like with, um, when Oswald is, or Penguin, is chucked in the river as a baby and is caught by his parents and he floats Oh my river. god, he's Moses! Yeah. All of it, it's like, there's a lot of Christian symbolism woven into into his films. Huh. It's very I cool. never noticed that. Yeah, it's very cool. My favourite spooky film, I think you'll agree with me on this one, The Addams Family. Christina Ricci. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not, in <laughs> Not in that She's film. Not in that film. She's actually older than me, just saying. Is she? Yeah, two years. Oh. Yeah. Milf. Stunning. She is. Mm. We basically became friends over simping over Christina Ricci. She is gorgeous. Yeah. It was literally us on shift just being like, Christina Ricci. She ever, she ever yes. turns up here, both me and my partner are going to... Apparently we're fighting over which one's leaving with her. <laughs> no, if she leaves with me. She ain't leaving with you. You're leaving in a box if you're trying to pick <laughs> from me. I think Family is an awesome film. I actually quite liked Wednesday as well. I'm not a massive fan of Jenna Ortega, although again, in the screen movies, really good. Mmm... But it is, I'm, I'm not, not a, big, a fan of her. I'm not a big fan of her. I hear too many behind the scenes stories. I try not to learn about actors because I find you learn about them, you learn things you don't want to know. And the meant, I like the idea that actors get to be someone you can look up to and be as a role model, like Keanu Reeves. But I oh, love Keanu Reeves. And Christina Ricci. Yeah. Mm. Carl mm. Urban. But General Ortega. Yeah, I. I mean, she might be perfectly lovely. She might. Mm, I've she heard could, a lot of other things. She could be. It's possible she's perfectly lovely because I've never met her personally. But then again, I don't, I don't see her in many things other than Scream and Wednesday, and it's like I'm, I'm not like blown away by her either. So it's like I, it she's used, very mid. It used, speaking of someone like Clint Eastwood from earlier, mm. or Arnold Schwarzenegger, it used to be you go to the cinema to watch a Clint Eastwood movie or an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Now you go to see a Thor movie. Dwayne. 
yeah. Dwayne the Rock. Yeah, but it's not you. Half the time you're not going to see the actor anymore. I wouldn't go. I wouldn't see General Ortega's name above the you know the movie title and go. I'm going to watch that because General Ortega's in it. But you do it for Christina Ricci. I still do it for Christina Ricci. Of course. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd watch a film of Christina sat there watching paint dry. <laughs> and enjoy it in five star rating. Yeah. And well, you'd also be touching yourself the entire time. Not the entire time. Good 30 seconds of it. <laughs> Only 30 seconds. And that's good. <laughs> Great. But no, uh, what I've heard about General Taker is she's very rude to just everyday staff, Allegedly. like caterers, journalists, stuff like that. And also, she's not that good of an actor. I've heard that about the guy who played uh, Mortalus as well. Mortalus? Morbius. Mortalus. <laughs> oh, you mean Jared Leto? Yeah, I've heard that about him. Again, it's a legend. I've never, He's a I've cult never leader. Unless, unless I meet he someone. He is a cult leader. Unless I meet someone, I tend to reserve judgement. But I've heard that about him. That he's he's a cult pleasant. leader. How? He's not charismatic. Well, he's a he's a cult leader. Yeah, I don't like him. <laughs> he's another one. If I see his name, it's, it puts me off uh, watching the film. Me than, too, honestly. To see it. My favorite part of Fight Club is when he got his face absolutely pelted in. <laughs> I even know he's in it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's in the background. He's like really blonde, and it was like in his early early acting career. I didn't notice it until it came up in, like, the credits, like, his name, and I was like, wait, he was? And then, like, did the quick IMDb search. Yeah, he was, like, the really blonde guy in it. Yeah. He got the absolute noticed. shit beaten out of him. I think I've only, I think I've only in the film a couple, once, twice, so. I, I've watched it too many times. It's been a while since I've I seen it I love well. Fight Club. I do like, um, oh, God. Names. <laughs> Jesus. What's his name? Not Brad Pitt, the other one. Who's in Fight Club? I was Edward Norton. Edward Norton. Yeah. I like Edward Norton. I liked him in um, Red Dragon, thinking of horror adjacent. Haven't seen it. Because yeah, the um, the Hannibal films, the Silence of the Lamb movies, they're not really true horror. They're more like a thriller with horror elements. Psychological, I'd yeah, say. So, yeah. Yeah. But they're not true horror. But I do really like them. Silence of the Lambs is. Amazing. I love it's Silence really of the Lambs. Film. Hannibal. Feminist under, film. Under Hannibal's underrated. Red Dragon is right. decent. Um, Mind Hunter, Man Hunter, it's Man Hunter, isn't it? The original one starring William Peterson back in the eighties. That's also underrated. Also underrated. Overrated, The Ring. With the bitch who comes out of the TV the seven days. Yeah, that yeah. one. I mean, one of my favorite horror films. I don't know if it is classed as horror. Coraline. I like that film. Yeah. It's creepy. As it's so good. It came out fifteen years ago yesterday. That's. I remember I was in year two when that came out. Fifteen, hang on, fifteen years ago, I was. Um, fifteen years ago, I was. How old six, I? nearly seven. I was twenty-four. <laughs> <laughs> you are old enough to be my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I was already at college and everything. <laughs> yeah, no, like um, I really like that one because it, it technically, yes, it is a horror film. But from the lens of a kid and the way a kid can understand it. Mm. But it's also really dark when you think about how this other mother, like, basically stalked her and everything this entire time. Yeah. And stole her parents. And she had to literally kill her to get out. And the good. ghost it's children. Awesome. There's so much lore behind it. It's like this. Coraline's awesome. It's a great film. I have it. I but think what is? Coraline's awesome. Hang oh, on. yeah, yeah. You have the uh, doll, don't you? It's not... Uh... No, but I have an equally creepy one. That is creepy. It's not actually mine, it's my partner's. <laughs> but no, I really like all the theories that come sure with it as well. I think I've seen it in your house at some point. But no, like, um... Yeah, there's so many theories behind it as well. Like, at the end, it's a widely accepted theory, or like, Nah, it's kind of proven, but not really. There's a lot of evidence for it that basically the other mother never died and she just kind of took the place of her mum and making Coraline think that she's back in the real world. Hmm. And it's also left kind of open because the very last shot is the cat climbing. It's like on the signpost and then you see it disappear. Like it's going back into the other world so the cat could flip between the dimensions. Yeah, the cat kept moving, didn't it? Yeah. 
I never fully Separate. trusted that cat. I don't trust cats in general. Yeah. There's one. There's a stray cat that's trying to adopt me. Magic. You've been adopted. I haven't been adopted. You've I'm been adopted. That is your child. Adopted. My dog. My dog will eat the cat. I can't have the cat. Basil will eat anything. Not him. The other one. Oh, okay, Pepper. Yeah. Yeah. She. She doesn't like cats. She'll eat it. I don't care. She Basil would be She'll scared. I don't. I don't want to think what he'd try and do to it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He basically has a dog who acts like a teenage boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you say put your penis away, he actually puts it away, though. So he knows exactly what he's doing. He's a goober, is what he is. Yeah. He has not a single you know, thought you know in that brain. a slightly horror-adjacent film I do really like? What? Seven. Been meaning to watch it. Brad Pitt, Morgan Freeman. Everything, yeah. everything Morgan Freeman in is good, but that film... It's obviously the seven deadly sins. Also, you've got Kevin Spacey as the villain. They don't of course, it's real Kevin. Life matching, um, yeah. yeah. Art mirroring. Art life. imitates life. Yeah. <laughs> but that film is really good. How they they do each of them and how it breaks down each crime mm. and the ending is just grotesque. <laughs> I won't I won't tell you what the ending is because you've right. seen it. Right. But the the film is so good. Mm. And how it how he does each of the seven deadly sins as a murder is just genius the film it came out of that era when morgan freeman was just appearing and everything he started off with like yeah. driving miss daisy and then he goes on to do something he's like been this. old for such a long time he's born old he's like he's, he's like he's like um angela lansbury just he reached an age at that about 12 he looked 60 and he stayed that way that explains why he's old in yeah. everything yeah he's never been young no he hasn't he was, he was just like a teen one day he hit puberty and was just like right i'm an old man now <laughs> And Pretty much. Yeah, she also did like these aren't horror adjacent, but the same sort of vein as that. You had kissed the girls and along came a spider, in the same sort of vein as Seven. Right. But they're not horror adjacent. They're just psychological thrills based on the Alex Cross novels. Basically, he's a detective who solves crimes, novel series. Right. Okay. But it does, they're, they're really weird and twisted. Yeah. And Kiss the Girls is very twisted. Along came a spider is just weird. But there's only two of them. I was always sad they didn't do more. But they came out a bit after seven. I think he got a bit typecast for a little bit doing that kind of a role. Yeah. And then he's just God all the time. Yeah, it started off in Bruce Almighty and then he's just, yeah, yeah I'm I God. Yeah, I think degree he is God. Yeah. yeah. It explains why he's not dead. should have been Supernatural as God. That should have done. <laughs> they should have done, yeah. <laughs> he should have been cast for Chuck. Hmm. Is Supernatural horror? fantasy horror mm. but it's also got a lot of comedy elements to it it does yeah but then sometimes it does go like full balls to the wall horror doesn't it it does some of it is genuinely creepy but then some of it's just really goofy and funny like the scooby-doo crossover yeah. episode the best bit is when castiel jumps out the like <laughs> no, no shaggy falls out the window scooby jumps after shaggy shouting Raggy! <laughs> and then and then castiel goes charging after scooby going scooby yeah <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on <laughs> And that episode where it's like basically Groundhog Day, but Dean just keeps dying. Yeah, with the uh, Heat of the again. Moment by Asia playing yeah. every time. He's just he's like walking in the street, smiling, smack, piano. Yeah, <laughs> and how she kept her dropping the coffee, and he'd automatically catch it. He's just oh, like... I, 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 need, I need to cover Supernatural. We need to do an entire video on Supernatural. You've not watched the ending of it yet. I, s I can't bring myself to watch it end. Right. I'll just keep, also, right. it went you know, on you too You want to know how it ends, right? I will just kick no, you. no, we are shush, not. Shush, shush, shush. I will just kick you in the stomach. That's how it ends. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's just a gut punch. I won't tell you how it ends. Don't. But the ending is perfect. You need to watch it. I have it's a feeling Dean dies. Show. It's the most perfectly... It's, the ending is perfect. It should have been ended a lot sooner. I think Supernatural went on for too long. I love it. It's a great show. It's one of my favourite shows. It goes on way too long. But it never really deteriorated in quality. It just reached its... I think it reached its end. It, it just reached, reached its limit. It reached its, its end of, right, we can't do any more than this. We're going to have to stop. Mm. So they ended it before it went over that hill, before it jumped the shark. I felt like it, they should have ended and then made Jodie's Home for Wayward Girls. Because that was... Wayward Sisters. Wayward Sisters, that's it. Because yeah. basically they were on about making it and then it got scrapped. Well, there but... was a backdoor pilot done in the last season for it. There's an episode called Wayward Sisters in season 15. They did. They started men discussing it, I think, in, like, 2016. Because hmm. I remember, like, my girlfriend at the time telling me about it. And I was like, yo, that'd be so cool. I'd love to see more of Jodie. Because Jodie just got roped I into it. Her. Oh, what was her name? The girl she adopted was, like, she was basically mini Claire. Dean. Claire. Yeah. 
Yeah. Biggie Dean, but a girl and younger. Yeah. She was fucking you know, awesome. I loved it. So it was Jimmy Novak's daughter. Yeah. And that's she was the cool. person Cassiel yeah. inherited. I, loved, I just loved how much shit she used to give Dean every time they were together. Yeah. And he, he just kind of loved it. He was just like, it's me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but, there is that one story. Well... There's more than one story. The arc that they had where there was that woman that Dean was seeing and his son was basically just like him but as a child in, like, I think season three. Yeah, they toyed with the idea of making it actually his son. Yeah. And then didn't. They, they decided against it. I felt they like did, that would You know, they great. didn't properly utilise it. Their brother. There was a third Winchester, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, they just left him in the pit with Lucifer. And then when Lucifer's brought up in later seasons, you he need, wasn't you need, in the pit. You need to finish watching it. Right. But he's still underutilised. They I, just forget I, about him. Because it's so it's old enough now. They do fix that. They just they they should have fixed it sooner. Because I remember later on, Rowena Crowley, the Winchesters and Castiel go to visit like Lucifer in his cage and he just wasn't there and I was like There were two of you. We saw it happen. Castiel said hey Aspa and do the thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Asper. Castiel was awesome. Yeah, I love Castiel. That was another thing. They kind of forgot that Castiel was a person for a couple of seasons. That he like inherited. Oh yeah, he's in yeah, and they did again. They fixed that eventually as well. Oh. That, that's not late season. Though, did, that's no, some, they did that. They fix that in like season twelve or something. Season he, thirteen. Yeah, but it was still way too late. I think it was yeah. earlier than that, like season eight. But then it was like four seasons of did no one report Jimmy is missing? Like, I don't know. Yeah, I can't remember. I don't think they did. I think they were just like hand waved that storyline away. Yeah. And then they eventually thought, no, we're gonna have to go back to it. Hey, we kind of. He's, he's got. He's meant to be the good guy. We can't have him just possessing someone like a demon. Yeah, and then they did the whole storyline of him uh, dying, and then his wife also died in that episode mm. and then it shows them both in heaven together which is cute but then claire is still around and she's a hunter now yeah she's awesome they, so, they so yeah. should have done wayward sisters there was, another, really there was another spin-off series planned um which was going to be about the monsters rather than the good guys yeah and they did a backdoor pilot for it again in the last season where you go to the city of Philadelphia, I think, or maybe Chicago, can't quite remember. And there's a vampire house and a werewolf house and something else. And they're all like, they run the city and they're all feuding and fighting with oh, each other. And right. that was originally a backdoor pilot for another spin off series that never. I think I know what you're on about with the British Men of Le Letters. No, I don't think they had them in it. They have, I cannot remember the episode in detail, but basically, they go to the city yeah. because they. The vampires, the werewolves, and whatever the other group were, were basically killing each other. Turf and, Wars. Yeah, and the series was going to be about that. So the right. Winchesters bugger off and leave. Supernatural. What were we talking about before the camera cut us off? Uh, somewhat about one of the spin-off shows with the um, the three great houses in Philadelphia. I want to say it was Philadelphia. I can't remember if it was Philadelphia or Chicago. Probably neither. Probably neither oh, no. To be fair, each episode's in a different state anyway. That show was awesome. Yeah. I, miss it. I, don't, well, I miss it and I don't want it to come back. Yeah. Because I know that I, I saw it's a, ran its course. I, I saw an interview with, not Jensen Ackles, um, the other one. Jared Padalecki. That's the one. And he was talking about it and goes, yeah, 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 you know, there's, there's talks as we're in discussion of a possible crime. I said, you can't bring it back. You don't know how it ends, no. but you can't. That ends very finally. It's like, you can't bring this back. It was. It ends, I mean, it's a gut punch and I'm still not over it. I didn't cry. But it's, you cried. I did not cry, but I got kicked in the nuts watching the end of that episode. <laughs> that 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 show ends so well; mm. it should never come back, just because of how well it ended. I get right. the, 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 the spin-off series. Great, I'm all I'm all for a spin-off show. Bring bring do Wayward Sisters. Do maybe mm. not the uh, maybe not the three great monster houses because that kind of crap. Mm. But yeah, do Wayward Sisters. Do a spin-off series about. Not the brother. They what? did the Winchester. Bring back Crowley. Sure. Do that as a spin-off series. Oh, I would love that. Yeah. Don't continue supernatural. Itself. I hated how Crowley got killed off. The worst. But there is some. There's still something about the end. It's still endless meme potential of like I can't really do his voice. But um. <laughs> Hello, boys. Yeah. 
Likewise. <laughs> just like the way he the way he, he goes out was pretty cool. It just feels a bit pointless because Lucifer comes back. It feels a bit wasted, but it wasn't wasted at that moment. At that moment, it was necessary. I don't feel like Rowena got enough screen time. Rowena was awesome. She was incredible. I loved her. You know, I, d I, don't, I, I don't know if this is true. I think it is true because I'm pretty sure I learned it recently again mm. as studying trivia. And I was like, holy shit, Rowena's married to God? Yeah. I, what? Yeah, I knew that. I didn't know this. I saw it on Facebook. And I was like, they're married? They're fucking... She's married to God? Yeah. Good for her. I mean... Really good for him. Sam's married to... God punched above his weight. Meg. Though. No, not Meg. Was it Meg? The one with the it demon wasn't blood. Yeah, it wasn't Meg. It was... Um, I know who it was. Yeah. Ruby. Ruby, yeah. Ruby, yeah. Ruby's, yeah. His, Ruby's his wife in real life, isn't she? And um, uh, Jensen Ackles' wife was in it once as well. I can't remember who, though. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't make as much of an impression. She Sorry. didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to Jensen's wife. <laughs> I mean, then again, Misha Collins' wife, I don't think she was in it at all. I'd be Misha Collins' wife. I, I was obsessed with that man. When I was like 14, 15, I was obsessed with Misha Collins. I remember where I was where Misha Apocalypse took place on Tumblr. That was the thing that happened. All of Tumblr for the whole day, the logo and everything was just Misha Collins' face. All the profile pictures, instead of seeing like people's profile pictures, it was Misha Collins' face. The like button was Misha Collins' face. Do you know something random that still exists? I don't know why it's just me. MySpace. No way that's still, it still going. Exists. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On this platform on YouTube, assuming people are watching this on YouTube, there was a video of like companies you'd be surprised still exist. It's like I was surprised to learn like Toys R Us and Woolworths actually still exist. Oh yeah, Woolworths is yeah. a big thing in Australia. Yeah, it's, it's coming back here as well apparently. And so, so is Toys R Us. But, yeah, um, Toys R Us is still in Canada. Yeah, I didn't know this, but then I was like, yeah, another one was um, yeah, 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 yeah. MySpace is still a thing. I would have, I would have thought they would have shut quite, that down. It's not quite the same as it used to be. It's become like I... a weird like advertising site, but it, it's still MySpace. I want to like, look my my space. Yep, it's still. I I'm, mean, apparently, I'm of the generation. It looks like a should, news website. Yeah, that, it's not very stable either, apparently. But uh, I'm of the generation where apparently everyone had a MySpace account. I never had a MySpace account. I didn't know what it was. I'm not. Very I so, knew what not MySpace very, was. I'm not really very social. No. I, I, I left. <laughs> I left school and into college and stuff. And some of the early social media things were coming out. There was one called Friends Reunited. Which was, Never heard of yeah, that. Yeah, it was really shit. It was like one of the very earliest. I don't know if it still exists, but it was really, really crap. And I remember me and a few other people signed up to it. And then I was like, this is crap. I don't care about that. I don't want that. I know about AOL Messenger. I don't. <laughs> I remember BBM. I Blackberry don't. Messenger. Oh, wait. No, kind of do remember that. Yeah, everyone who had a this Blackberry. This is a good podcast, this, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, like, everyone had a Blackberry. You'd have a BBM pin. And that was how you added your friends, and that was, and you would like message them oh, with yeah, like the like keyboard. Special, yeah, it was like a special in messenger just of its own, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's like it was basically yeah. like the selling point of BlackBerry. Never is BlackBerry still a thing? Yeah, they're all just touch screens now. They're not little keyboards. Uh, I that was little keyboard. That was fun. I can't press the buttons on. My partner had one. I couldn't. My 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 fingers are too fat. I literally have to use my nail there, just like I, typing. I just don't have the dexterity, especially in this thumb, because I I injured it years ago. Yeah. Cut it open. It's what the nice, lovely scars there ah. for. Yeah, yeah. It went straight down to the bone, and my hand kind of fell open. Ah. Uh. It didn't hurt because I took out all the nerves. Oh, why are you telling me this? Because why not? If, if I had to endure it, you can listen to it. And I've not really got much dexterity with that thumb, so it's not very strong and it's not very useful. That hand is generally just kind of... It looks fine, but it's actually really weak and useless. And I just right. I can't do... My mum had a stuff. Blackberry up until, I think, 2015. It was one of the older models which slid up and it had the three buttons, but it still had the whole keyboard. So I remember she liked to use it for emails, and she'd just be there on the phone, like, writing emails, like... And she'd look so intense. <laughs> Probably because you're having to concentrate to press those Probably. tiny No, buttons. I had, like, a first BlackBerry when I was, like, 11, 12. Oh, I just kicked the mic stand. No, I had one when I was 11, 12, and it was my mum's old phone. I basically just had, like, my older sister or my mum's phone up until, like, I think I was 16. I got my first actual phone. That was mine. I was 16 when I got my first phone. 
<laughs> I, I mean, it would have been in what, 2001? Yeah, 2000, I think. 2000 to the, yeah, either 2000, 2001. It was called a CD930E, which if I'm going to remember to do this when I'm editing this, I'm going to put a picture of that up on screen to see how horrific this phone was. Here it is. Yeah, yeah. It was, <laughs> it was awful. It was blue. I had a big aerial on top. Oh, was it the blocky ones that you pulled up? No, and... it was not that old. <laughs> they were from like the 80s. I mean, you were around. It barely. <laughs> But yeah, it was it was kind of crap. I remember it was like, no one knew what to do with the mobile phone when they first came out. Like, it didn't, you didn't have a camera on it. Mm. You could do text messages and phone calls, obviously, were pretty much all good. And it had, like, Snake on it or something. And you had, yep. like, you know, everyone, like, because phones were new, all the accessories were all new. And it came with this stupid little pocket thing. To, which it, <laughs> I it remember belt, those! And it into. It was yeah, awful. Yeah, it was like a pistol holder, but for your phone. Yeah, yeah. It was crap. Yeah. The phone was shit. My mum bought it for me, but she did it really weirdly and she she didn't let me pick it she just they just took me to morrison's one day made me stay in the car while morrison's. Inside and wouldn't let me come in to pick the phone even though i was like please let me pick my own phone and ever since i just hated that phone just because i didn't get to pick it and i was a really stubborn awkward angry teenager and i was like yeah not my phone <laughs> i'm gonna use it anyway because i need to <laughs> go. <laughs> what were you even doing with phones like all you could really do was like call and text and even they had to pay for calls. Contracts were around as well. You could you could get a contract. Yeah, but you could only do like 20 hours of call and like 300 I was, messages. I was, always, I was always pay as you go because pay as you go was cheaper than going on contract. Yeah. It made more sense because you got more for the money. Than Is you pay as you go still a thing? Yeah, because I, I know a couple of people that still have it. It would surprise me that it's still a thing. I thought we'd have all been contract by now. Mm. Mm. My daughter's got a contract phone. She's nine. <laughs> Back to horror films. Yeah, it's, it's doing well as a horror film. Yeah, it's doing great. We're, yeah. we're talking about phones we now. Been, we should have probably planned this more. We, <laughs> we probably should have, yeah. Yeah, we planned more. I'd probably chop a lot of this out, won't I? <laughs> probably. Scream. No, the first one I absolutely love. The absolute... Right, this is my favourite thing about the first Scream film. How Drew Barrymore was the biggest selling point of the entire film. She was in all the promotional stuff. She was doing all the She's interviews. On the on She's on the posters. Everyone's thinking she'd be the final girl. Dies from the first ten minutes. Yeah. The first kill. The very first one. She's aw she is awesome in that film. It's actually, I, she think, is. I think that was pretty much the first time I knew who Drew Barrymore was as well. Really? It? Yeah. She was big since she was a child. She was in the uh, Poltergeist. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But I just didn't know who she was. She had a really rough so life. Me, when Drew Barrymore was like, Drew Barrymore is in this, she's like the main. I was like, who? <laughs> <laughs> Bear in mind, like, in 1996, I was. How old was I? 11? I yeah. Think. So I didn't really know celebrities. I think the only person I knew was John Candy who was one of the few actors I knew who that was, and I liked his yeah. films. And anyone else was like, yeah. And then Scream, I had no idea. But I do really like that film. Everything about it is the whole... The gag of the reveal that there was more than one killer. Yeah. It yeah. caught everyone. Have you ever... There's a YouTube channel called... Um, it's called Zach Cherry. Mm. I don't know if that's his actual name, but that's his YouTube handle. It's called Zach Cherry. And he pretty much specialises in Scream. And he does these really cool breakdowns that I just do not have the time in my life to do. But they're very cool, and he works out who the killer is. In every, not as in like who the killer is, I mean, rather who does the killing. Each kill, yeah. like who so, it like, was. For example, he figured out that it was actually definitely Billy Loomis that killed Drew. Oh. But both of them were definitely there because when you think about it, and she's strung up, there's no way he. Was One able person to, would be able to do yeah, that. Yeah, he couldn't tie her up and string her up before her parents got there on his own. So Stu must have been there as well for the first kill, mm. if you call that the first kill, because technically they killed her mum, didn't they, at first? Yeah. But that was definitely Billy that did that. Whereas, like, um, Stu's girlfriend, was it, what was her name? I know it's... Um, I can't remember. Paige Matthews, isn't it? The actress. Yeah. And um, But, yeah, her um, her character was definitely killed also by Billy. Oh. Because um, there's this moment when Stu first comes into the house... And he gives Stu this look and he like gives him like a little, like, not a wink, but like a little eyebrow twitch. Yeah. And then Stu starts giggling and puts his hand over his mouth because he's just basically been told, yeah, your girlfriend's dead. I've killed her. Bear in mind, these people are, you know, dicks. Yeah. So. <laughs> that is kind of the yeah, point. He worked, he worked out step by step based on it. And I still stand by. Did you, The Scream 3 has two killers. I'm one of the people that stand on this argument on this hill that I will accept no argument. There were definitely two killers in Scream 3. 
because there was meant to be two. Yeah. And then they changed their mind and they reshot some stuff. But a lot of the things in the film, I kind of learned this watching his channel. That I feel like that's something you can't just change in post. Yeah, yeah but they didn't change in post, they, re they reshot stuff. Well, and still, the it'll scenes, still be the certain, stuff there, in there. Is, there. there are certain things that in the film don't make sense, and it makes sense that the other killer was definitely there. Yeah. And then that Roman just betrayed her and killed her at the end of the film and just claimed all the credit. But it makes sense to me. She's like, it's a bit like people saying Stu is or isn't alive. That's a big debate. I think I'd like him to be alive. But I'm last, pretty sure he's dead. The last film did mention that, like, put a thing up with his death. Yeah. On board, but there's a theory that there's a big fan theory about him being alive because all he basically did was get stabbed and then the TV chucked on his head. He might actually be alive. It's never been properly confirmed. Oh, no, it, it looks like he was pretty dead. The point is, there's an opening to bring him back. There is an open. If they really wanted to, they could easily twist that for him being still alive and just in prison. I'd like them to because I, I just, I just want to see more of Matthew Lillard. They also said that about um, Star Wars. Um, the guy who comes back... With the Darth Sidious, hmm. he's been brought back too many times, and the on about bringing him back for another series. It's like both the, the deaths we it's, saw it's, were it's very prequels, final. It's like a prequel, fine. No, as in but, bringing like, him back. But, but it's like oh, it was bad enough. Like, in the original Legends, hmm. they did have him come back. They had like the old Dark Empire saga and stuff, which they did have him come back as a clone, like yeah. they did in the sequel film. They just in the film they did it badly in the comics it was stupid i don't personally like a lot of the legends material because i find it very convoluted and contradictory yeah but it did at least make sense and it was done better the that was just jj abrams came back in and to, in in his defense not right, jar jar abrams <laughs> not jar jar abrams in, his, in that guy's defense a little bit for this film he did a pretty decent job with the Force Awakens. Yeah, it's just pretty. You could. It's argue, it's good. It's, it's just, good. It's, it's clearly just. It's clearly just. Re, it's, it's clearly just remade. A, a new, new hope. hope. Yeah. But at least it was watchable. It was pretty decent. But it was he, all right. A lot he, of it was fanfare. But he he's known for not being able to do endings very well, so he left everything yeah. open ended because he wasn't supposed to do any ended, expecting someone else to come in and finish it. And then the Last Jedi comes along, and just wipes out all, all the good work he did. It was a different destroys, director. Destroys yeah. the continuity. And then he's brought back for the third film to try and fix it. And in his defence, that was a train wreck. That he was I'm trying to sorry, but Lost. Right, he directed Lost. The worst ending I've ever seen in my life. That's also technically horror. You could argue Lost is horror. Have you ever seen it? I've watched most of it and then I sort of skimmed through the last bit. But you remember the ending? Yes. It was all just a dream. That is the laziest, laziest, the worst ending they could have possibly I, had for that series. I, actually, I, no, I don't. I normally ignore negative comments on YouTube, not because I. I love them. I, I They're so respond, funny. I sometimes respond, sometimes I don't. But to be honest, I get a lot of comments now. They're so, so I can't, funny. I can't, I, respond, I can't respond to every comment anymore. I love just, hate I, comments. Again, there's just too many, and I can't. I can't always respond to. Hate them. comments are yeah. so funny. But there was one, and it's about lost. Which I've right. never done a video about Lost because I'm not a big enough fan of it. And um, but I'd commented on another video about Lost. Someone else, it's a character member. And I have my settings just in case anyone's wondering. A set to not give me notifications if someone comments on one mm. of my comments because otherwise, again, it's notification after notification. Yeah. I can't be bothered with all. That. I, I can't read them all, so I just turn that off. So this person, this other person, who, whose video that wasn't, so mm. another one person video I commented on, another person then replied to my comment and didn't like that I didn't respond to them. So they must have gone back to it. Th this is going somewhere. They've clicked on me, come to my channel, found a random one of my videos, and they left this comment, which they have subsequently deleted, which just said, why do you leave stupid comments? <laughs> and I just read it and I was like I just like I love normally I just carry on scrolling because it was that's so funny. I only noticed it because it was just in the middle of other comments I was like having a quick glance at the notifications I did and my comments section see if there was any comments because mm. I, I only usually respond to the ones where I've asked people comment down below tell me yeah, how, yeah. I'll engage with you and I normally kind of keep going unless something catches my eye and as I was scrolling I noticed it I was like Okay. <laughs> so I responded to this comment. I'm like, the irony of this comment is clearly lost. Yeah. Me. And then he responded to me again. 
And I eventually worked out what he was talking about. And we ended up in this big argument where eventually I was saying to him, just, dude, just go away. I said, you are a troll. And he's like, I'm no troll. And I'm like, I Clearly. hope he's watching this. Because you Hi. are a troll. You're a troll. That is troll behaviour, yeah. my guy. And he, he wouldn't go away. And he kept arguing. Jesus. He's like, he's like, you're talking about stuff you don't know. I was like, I've seen Lost. Even if I didn't quite understand the ending, which he claimed I didn't. <gasps> It the, doesn't matter. There's like, no explanation. Said, my, my there's argument, no explanation. My argument wasn't that I disliked Lost in and of itself. My argument was I don't rate or like J.J. Abrams as a director. I think he ruined Star Wars. I think he ruined Star Trek. Even though there are elements of both of those franchises that he did that I do like. Lost was good, but then he just got stupid and ended horribly. Yeah. And he's very good at recreating things that the people have done. But not good at creating something original, although being human, oh no, almost human, that he created that had Carl Urban in it. Man Crush, just saying. <laughs> uh, it's actually really good. Mm. But it got cancelled, so he didn't have to end it. But Great. my argument with this guy was it's not lost, I have an issue with necessarily, it's JJ Abrams. And he wouldn't have it. And he's, he's ultimately deleted the entire thread. So of I course, did out of embarrassment. I did screenshot a lot. Pull up the know. screenshots. <laughs> Here they are. Now, I'm not going to do that because I don't want people to <laughs> his channel because he does do a lot of Lost videos himself. And Great. It's like, I'm all good for him to have his opinion. My issue was, what are you doing coming to me, trolling me that because you didn't like... And my argument was, you didn't like... This is why I tried to explain to him. You, you're yeah. a troll. I said, I commented something on someone else's video that has nothing to do with you. You didn't like what I said. So you have then come to me because I didn't respond to you to argue with a complete stranger on the internet, which is just a waste of everyone's time. time. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but it intrigued me that this guy wanted to argue. And I, quite frankly, I eventually reached a point of like, arguing with intransigent, ignorant people is not a good use of my personal time. So what have we learned in this episode? We did not talk about horror films as much as we should have other things. That is true. I mean, circling back to what you just said, absolutely love a good hate comment. Hmm. They are so funny. I remember a TikTok I made about Spoon's toilets in Manchester. Everyone saw it because all of my friends were sending it to me. And oh my god, the comments were brutal and I was just sat there in my room cackling at them. Because they were just so stupid. Just, just for context, there's something like eight, 70 or 80% of the people that watch my channel are American. Spoons is a reference to Weatherspoons. Weatherspoons. Which is a pub. Yeah, I was at the In pub. Britain. Yeah, we just call it Spoons. It's a chain of pubs. Manchester has five of them. It's wild. More than that, I think. But, um, yeah, it was basically about the toilet and spoons, how it had a coffee table, a fireplace and a sofa. That was it, and oh my god, the comments, everyone's like, this she is so annoying, I would not like to talk to this person, this girl in person, who does she oh, think she is, this. what is that thing wearing, and it was just like, the most horrible, heinous shit, and I was just cackling, because an innocent video I made about me and Spoons, and there were just so many hate comments, it was hilarious. Yeah. I normally leave them, a lot of them come up, they get flagged automatically as not a blocked comment that they need approval right because i have certain blocked words mm. on my channel because i don't want people arguing in my comment section i don't mind if they want to say offensive stuff to me it doesn't bother me yeah but i'm not having someone i had someone do this to another person that commented on one of my videos and they put a comment on it was innocuous i don't remember what it was but it was perfectly pleasant and all it was was something to do with star trek and they mentioned blah blah something in star trek i like this rah rah uh, and it was probably something like they like the new Discovery series because a lot of Star Trek mm. fans don't like that now. And it was something like that. And then someone started attacking them. And I'm like, I'm not having this. I'm not having... As much as I can avoid it, I try not to... I don't want all that vi bile and putridness in my comment section. I don't, I don't yeah. want all that hate. And I don't care if it's directed at me. I don't care. I just think it's I'm not funny. having it directed at other people because it's unnecessary. Yeah, it's that's... Like Star Trek, mm -mm. As, a, as a theme, as a show... Is meant to it's about equality, yeah, and yeah. inclusivity, and you know, overcoming adversity and bringing people together. Exactly. Not, I mean, I get that there's always going to be arguments over stuff, and arguments and debate is fine. But when you just show being a dick, yeah. So yeah. I put a load of restrictions in that block certain words, and the only time I ever reject them is when it's someone attacking someone else. And it's very rare. It's normally I'll come across a hate comment or saying something about me, calling me out fat or whatever they want to call me. But fair, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
But I gained four pounds recently. Congratulations. I kind of need to. I'd lost like two stone very rapidly. I kind of needed to put a little That's more not good, on. yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I just go through an approval because they don't bother <laughs> me. It's like a negative comment. It's all engagement. Keep it coming. Exactly. <laughs> like, I literally say at the end of my videos, leave a hate comment because I think they're funny. Because they are. I just find it so funny that someone really has to put thought into a really shitty comment and I'm just there like, that's funny. Like, there's nothing that someone can say to me that I haven't said two inches away from my own reflection. So, like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, me neither. I've never yeah. have. I, I either don't notice someone saying something negative to me or don't care when they do because I'm, I'm, I'm a big boy now. It doesn't bother me. It never bothered me when I was younger. I was impossible to bully. I'm actually, because I'm autistic, I usually either don't notice when someone's saying something or utterly, utterly do not care. I was bullied constantly in school, so I'm just like, do your worst, like, try me, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what the comments are like on this. Probably horrible. <laughs> how far people get in, because I think we're something like an hour in there. Yeah, something yeah. like that. We should probably wrap it up. <laughs> this is probably going to turn into a podcast that some poor person will have to listen to. It's like, oh, it's a horror podcast. Let's listen to them talk horror about Horror podcast, yeah. everything yeah. but. Yeah. Mo mobile phone, school bullying. Random hate comments. Yeah. The odd mention of scream. Spoons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this needs to be more planned next time. It does. <laughs> it's the pile episode. It's okay. Yeah. That probably should bring it to an end because it is about, we, an, yeah. Yeah, about an hour. Well over that. Just an hour and... One? Hour and eight? I can't. Hour think. and five? Fifteen? I don't know. I don't know. What's Either way... Is? We're very far into this. We've been recording for way too long. Yeah, so let's bring yeah. it to an end. Subscribe so. to my channel, Steph Red. It'll be linked in the description. Or if you're watching this on a non-YouTube platform, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. on YouTube. And um, you're on TikTok as well. Yeah, TikTok, Instagram, Instagram Steph Red 13. Come find me, say hi. All my, all my Leave a hate comment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all mine are connected, or in the down in the description box below on youtube i don't know about whatever podcast but drop a follow if it's finally reached podcast form this or just like share and subscribe all works for me great catch you later bye <laughs>